What I think it can be useful for people to understand is that many things will spike cortisol throughout the day, stress, cold water, exercise, but the idea is that it comes down to baseline or near baseline um, rather quickly. One of the worst situations, as you pointed out, is when the highest level of cortisol is consistently shifted to the afternoon period. In fact, that's a um, pretty reliable signature of certain forms of depression. This is work by uh, my colleague David Spiegel at um, Stanford Psychiatry and the, the great Bob Sapolsky, Robert Sapolsky, of uh, why zebras don't get ulcers, yep. behave, et cetera, and fame, lots of, lots of popular books there. Um, I think that if people are trying to regulate their cortisol and they're just under, and they just understand that basic contour, that the baseline should be, uh, you know, rise pretty quickly after one rises in the morning. So it's easy to remember, rise, rise, um, rise out of bed and rise cortisol with light, um, bright light, with exercise, um, with caffeine, these things will all increase cortisol. And then across the day, it's normal for cortisol to spike, but then to use some of the down regulation methods that you described, in particular the breathing methods yep. and exercise itself as the case may be. But then to really pay attention to how much psychological and physical stress is occurring in the six hours or so or eight hours prior to sleep. Um, does that seem like a, a good sort of broad contour of how to have a healthy pattern of cortisol release? Because you actually want the cortisol to reduce inflammation and initiate or participate in the recovery process. You will not see any progress from exercise training without a large spike in cortisol. It is critically important when we think of phrases like cortisol, inflammation, stress, this is not bad. Right? Physiology is not personified. Right? There, there, things don't like hate you in the body. Right? It is all, it's not good and bad. They just are. Um, the more you try to suppress cortisol, the more you suppress adaptation. What you want is exactly what you mentioned, large spikes met with large, quick recovery. And you want to do that throughout the day and get that hormetic stressor. This is, so to going back to your ashwagandha and rhodiola issue, um, it, I think it would be very short-sighted for people to do that as this is a prophylactic. Because okay? you, you, if you blunt cortisol, you're going to cause immunosuppressive. Yeah, especially early in the day. Totally. Taking ashwagandha before going to train is... is the, counterproductive. Yeah, we, we do not just, this is not a baseline part of our foundational package, right? If you go look at the um, athlete foundations or the athlete resilience protocols that put together, you're not going to see these things in there for that specific reason. Um, any form of cortisol regulation needs to be done strategically. If you are excessively high and we're bringing you back down to normative values at the right time, then great. If you're normal though, then taking you down lower than that is actually problematic. The same thing is actually true since we're here. For oxidative stress, for information, antioxidant use. Um, we mentioned, I think, earlier about taking vitamin C and vitamin E post-exercise will actually blunt adaptations, or at least it has the potential to do so. Same thing, right? If you're modulating this response just because, and you have not done so because of uh, actually biological testing that indicated you needed to do such, then you actually may be making things worse. And so um, we, we see this constantly with people who take a number of supplements and substances for sleep and then they wake up the next morning groggy and your your cortisol suppressed okay great so then they take something for stimulation and then the rest of the day they're trying to reduce and then you're in this nasty cycle instead of just getting out of the way and letting cortisol do what it's supposed to do uh, and then making sure again you're teaching it so this is actually a coachable response you can coach your own body to go down in the later part of the day and go up in the earlier part of the day I mean, you want to make sure that you are driving that train with intent. And so, again, to reiterate, if you don't need that, you shouldn't do it, right? If you don't need to lower cortisol, you shouldn't walk around doing it. You're just going to suppress the state even far. And this is what's needed. This is needed for anabolic responses. So you're not going to grow muscle if cortisol is not spiked. It's, it's going to compromise it, rather. So you want to be intentional with these practices. Uh, especially in the form of, of supplementation. Be very, very intentional. I've heard it said that carbohydrates, in particular starchy carbohydrates, Definitely. can inhibit cortisol. Definitely. And uh, this could be through the uh, tryptophan amino acid related pathway that ratchets up to uh, serotonin release, probably some other things too. I mean, the idea that carbohydrates just stimulate serotonin is, is a little bit uh, overly simplistic. No, there's cellular I think. mechanisms, AMPK going up and immediately turning on there, yeah. Right. So, um, you know, I think we've all experienced this 
uh, you know, we're stressed, we're stressed. We, uh, it doesn't necessarily even have to be highly processed, you know, uh, fat associated, you know, fatty carbohydrates, um, you know, like potato chips and, and potato chips and dip or these kinds of things. It can also be a bowl of rice, a bowl of oatmeal, a bowl of pasta, um, which here I'm not trying to demonize um, carbohydrates. I, I do ingest carbohydrates um, minimally or non-processed carbohydrates um, most of the time, but not all the time. And they have a, a fairly potent uh, effect on, on lowering stress and mm -hmm. perceived stress and even quality of sleep, which is not to say that somebody has to load up on them like crazy unless their glycogen is really depleted. Yeah. We talked a lot about this in the endurance episode. I know we'll touch yeah. on it more in the nutrition supplementation episode. But um, in thinking about the relationship between carbohydrates and cortisol and what we've just been talking about in terms of cortisol as being vitally important for the adaptation trigger or triggering adaptation, it's probably a better way to put it, but that it can blunt cortisol taken post-training or um, maybe in the evening before sleep, what are some of the basic ways that one can think about and maybe use carbohydrates in specific ways in order to, let's say, control cortisol rather than uh, quash cortisol? Uh, you actually have alluded to it a number of times already. So we oftentimes will give people a lot of carbohydrates at night um, for some of these reasons. Um, you're going to feel fantastic. A lot of people, it helps you sleep. Um, both get to sleep and stay asleep, sleep quality. You talked about specifically, remember, think about it this way. Cortisol at its core is an energy signaling molecule. It says we are in the need for energy. Great. Um, epinephrine is the same way. You, you'll start seeing, for example, cortisol will liberate uh, free fatty acids, put them in the bloodstream, get you prepared to do something. The problem is if it's continually elevated throughout the day with no down regulation, we start running into issues, right? So again, this is the differentiation between, oh, my cortisol is slightly elevated all day versus I had a really big, big spike after training. I had a really big spike after a breath protocol, et cetera, and then it went back down. So that being said, if you then ingest carbohydrates, you are telling, uh, it is quick to see the signal, oh, we have nutrients, we have energy, Again, specifically carbohydrates, therefore cortisol can sort of go back down. We don't need to be liberating free fatty acids and preparing uh, the need for fuel. So you can help yourself go to sleep for many, as you pointed out, many mechanisms actually of why carbohydrates will help you sleep at night. Um, for some, not all people, but some, that would be one of the relationships it has with cortisol.